My mom, 50-year-old female, was caught in an affair with her high school boyfriend by my dad, 54-year-old male. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. Story post, guys, I'll put this up on the screen if you want to check it out. But you guys read the title? Let's just get into it. So, Reddit Surviving Infidelity. My family was torn apart by my mother's affair. Seeking advice, I guess, reconciliation. Hey, all. I am not exactly sure where to begin with this post. I am a 21 year old male and I grew up in what I considered to be a happy loving family with no signs of unrest or happiness. But in August of 2020, my mom, 50 year old female, was caught in an affair with her high school boyfriend by my dad, 54 year old male. Two weeks later, he decided on a divorce. Good for dad. On August 18th, they told my little sister about the divorce on the drive to her first year at college, and I learned a few hours later at home. Two days later, I left for my second year of college. The whole experience was extremely traumatic, as I only had a couple of days to process everything before I left my childhood home of 17 years for the final time. They sold the house at the end of September, and I will likely never go back. My sister still hasn't spoken to my mom since August 19th, 2020. Wow. Dang. In the following months after the divorce, my dad moved to the town I live in for college, and I moved in with him. This might seem strange to some, but my dad and I have always been extremely close, and it felt like the obvious choice for both of our needs. I am incredibly thankful that this worked out the way it did. Today, he has recovered incredibly and seems content with life. My dad and I are closer than ever before, and I have no doubt that we'll remain so. We ski, bike together a few times a week. In the meantime, I've struggled tremendously to somehow repair my relationship with my mother. For the first couple of months, I would call her only to discuss the affair and I would yell and ask extremely difficult questions to her about why she tore our lives apart, and especially, what did you think was going to happen? But my mom is a quiet and reserved person, and also has a strong tendency to paint herself as the victim in any confrontation, which has been incredibly stressful for me back then and now. She has a knack for saying, it doesn't matter, it already happened in response to any of my attempts at closure or just honest communication between us. I'll talk about my sister and how she's still hurting from all this. My mom will respond with things like, oh, so it's all my fault, then isn't it? I guess I should just go away forever since nobody cares about me. Obviously, you can't really understand and heal from an affair and divorce when the person you need to heal with responds in this way. I'm always pulling all the weight and doing all the talking in these conversations, and she just goes along with it. I still don't really even know why she chose to cheat on my dad, and all of our friends and extended family were shocked and devastated by the news of my family's separation, as my parents never fought, never had any issues really, inside and out. I only mention this to emphasize how blindsided we all were by this happening. I still call my mom once or twice a week, and we mostly make small talk about anything but the terrible things that happened to us. During this time, I was also attending therapy through my school, and I learned quite a bit about myself, including that I am on the autism spectrum. I also learned mindfulness techniques and improved at not needing the why behind the actions of my mother. In some ways, my relationship with my mother improved because of this. At the least, my own mental health and ability to cope with my trauma 
and newly discovered ASD improved significantly. I stopped attending therapy when I graduated in June of 2021. In May of 2021, my mom called to tell me that she had chosen to give away my two childhood dogs to another family that none of us had ever met. Of course, this was a devastating blow to my already incredibly strained relationship with my mom. In theory, I could have taken them and brought them here. My family lived in Texas, but I now live in Colorado. But it would have dramatically impacted the lifestyle that I've worked hard to achieve. I felt and still feel that since she was the one who tore apart the dogs' home in the first place, she should bear the burden of caring for them. She would never admit it to me, but the reason she gave them away was that she had moved to a nice apartment in an upscale area of the city and was unwilling to move to a place with a backyard, even though she could afford it. Her apartment environment, naturally, was very stressful for our dogs because they are fairly high maintenance and had lived their whole lives prior with direct access to a backyard. I went to see them at their new home once once last summer, and it was incredibly traumatic for me. Although I was happy to see them, I was mortified by seeing them displaced from where I feel that they belong. The reason I'm writing this now is that although my relationship with my mom has marginally improved over the past year and a half, I still, I still feel like I haven't really processed the trauma I went through. My mother seems content with, with running from the difficult conversations we'd certainly need to have to really heal our relationship. When I bring up uncomfortable truths or ask her difficult questions, she frames everything as if she is the victim of some great injustice or gaslights me about the events that took place what responsibilities she bears in them, or how valid my feelings are towards her. I still love my mom, and I'd like to have a healthy relationship with her again. But she doesn't seem to understand that I can simply bury all of these feelings and pretend to trust her and respect her again. She ruined everything that I cared about the most. And once everything was damaged beyond repair, she took the one thing that was still innocent and untainted by the affair, my childhood pets, and ruined that too. I'm overwhelmed with grief from the loss of my family, the mother I knew, the dogs, my house, my old life, and more. I have nightmares about being betrayed by people I love. I go down long mental paths and exhaust myself trying to figure out why she did this to us because I can't accept that she's a bad person. I'm ashamed to admit this one. But I also constantly wrestle with feelings of hatred towards women, and I am afraid that between the family, trauma, and my Asperger's, I won't ever have a healthy romantic relationship or a family of my own. In summary, despite the therapy and consistent communication with my mom, I still don't feel like I've healed from all this, and the openness and trust that I need from my mother seems impossible to receive. I'm never sure if maintaining my relationship with my mom is really worth it. What do you guys think? Am I justified in feeling so angry and conflicted? If you were me, would you have ever even given your mother a chance? What strategies would you use to develop a new healthy relationship with your parent? I do love her, and I want to, and I want to be close to her again somehow. But sometimes I think that that's an unrealistic goal. I'd really appreciate any feedback or insights that you might have, even if you don't have any insights for me. I've in a way enjoyed venting my thoughts about this through my keyboard. So thanks for reading, at the very least. Wow, let me give my thoughts. Man, I can I can say what I would do if I were in your shoes. If I at least tried to come to my mom, and confront her about it and ask the difficult questions and things like that and she was and she's just short with me it is what it is and she plays the victim that'll make me fall back i wouldn't even waste my time you know i'll just keep it at holidays seriously and i'm just talking about from my from me if this happened to me i know what i would do um holidays birthdays hey happy birthday you know happy holiday whatever it is or, you know, whenever I see her, we speak or whatever. Or if she calls me 
I, I wouldn't I would want to I know I personally wouldn't want to go out of my way to speak to a person who just runs away from, you know, the difficult questions or questions that I might have that are bothering me, you know. So I would I just wouldn't bother reaching out for me. That's for me. I wouldn't tell you to do that. I would you do what works best for yourself. But um and you know, your situation is your situation, so a lot of situations is on this channel, a lot of people would get cheated on. You witnessed your mother cheat on your father, and it made you feel a certain way about women. You know, um, I personally have been very disrespected by women in relationships, and I've read stories of people going through it, and I know people who personally went through it with women. That doesn't make me hate anybody, though. You don't want to give somebody that type of power. You know, you don't need to hate anyone. You know, you're still going to, whether you're an entrepreneur, you work for a firm or a company or organization, you're going to be around women. What's the point of, you know, hating someone? You, you got to work with people and things like that. You know, there's going to be some business transactions or whatever. You know, you're buying a house. Your realtor may be a woman. It could be a man, of course, or, you know, it depends, you know, it, it, it whatever. You go buy a car, you could be a woman sell you know, like what's the point of just you don't have to stress yourself out hating anybody. I don't hate anyone at all. At all. And no one anyone listening to this channel or channel similar, you shouldn't hate anyone. You shouldn't. So uh, I would definitely say that, but um let's check out the comments here. Someone said, I think you're wasting your time with your mother. If you didn't contact her, would she reach out to you? See, that's what I was saying. You realize your mother is the source of your hatred towards women, right? Combined with everything else. Your mother is a severely mentally broken person. She lacks an ability to empathize with her actions. Here's OP. If I didn't contact her, I imagine she would text me, but never call me. Wow. I definitely couldn't consider her an abusive parent, despite what's happened. She was always a good mom to me. I don't think she's a bad person, just terribly misguided. Wow. Why not try no phone calls for a set period? Two months. See how it changes your perspective. Yeah? Bro, you are not understanding what your mom is doing mentally torturing you. It's what we call abuse, and you can't see that until you have a good therapy. You sound like a very thoughtful and caring person. And I agree with you that love is complicated, but it's not complicated for your mother. She cheated and betrayed your father, tore apart your family, and gave away your dogs. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm also glad that your dad, he found out. He quickly said, no, we're getting a divorce. Nope. Nope. He wasn't taking it. He wasn't about to sit around and reconcile. He might have considered reconciling because we, if you guys were a lot younger, he probably would have, you know. Um, but he's like, my kids are grown now. They understand. I'm out of here. So I don't know. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. We'll catch you guys at the next one. Reddit surviving infidelity. My wife has left me for another man, and I was directed here to start the process. D-Day was November 22nd, 2020. Me and my wife have known each other since November of 2013 and started dating immediately. At the time of typing this, I'm 28 and she's 24. We met when she was 17 and I was 21. One year in, got kind of rocky, but we put it back together and stuck with it. We got married on May 16th of 2016. We had our baby boy two years ago. Just eight days ago, she told me she was seeing another man and that it was physical. She had been seeing him for three weeks at that point. I was asking her if she thought I should leave and if I should take our son with me. She nodded, so I just went into the other room and went to bed. Just in shock. Stared at the ceiling the entire next day in between taking care of our son. The next day I threw what I could in my car and I left. 
I want to clarify, I have a terrible drinking problem and it has consumed me. And now that it has ruined my life, I can't let it ruin my son's life. I'll be going to meetings immediately. We've been happy together all these years, made sacrifices for one another, and have, been, and have enjoyed each other. We lived in a city for three years after we got married as she was advancing in her career. I was managing a retail store and making really good money. She was managing a restaurant and she was making really good money. But we never saved. We've always been terrible with our spending. On Valentine's Day 2017, we tried for a baby and got pregnant on the first try. Our debts were piling up and we had no health insurance. I quit my managing job so I could get a different job and qualify for insurance for her. You never know what can happen during a pregnancy, you know? We decided she should keep hers since she loved her job and is very passionate about it. I got another job and got insurance. That November, we welcomed our son into the world on her due date, happy and healthy. The birth was natural and I held her hand through the entire process and watched my son enter this world and even cut the cord. We were so happy and so in love. Once the insurance paid out, I quit that job because it was awful and I went back to the same company I was working for. Our debts continued piling up and we wound up with a chapter 13 bankruptcy. We were surviving though. We just lived our lives for a year and a half after that and loved each other and raised our son. She begged me to move to another city for another job offer with the same company and a substantial pay raise. I told her I didn't want to give up what we had there. But she continued pushing and pushing and three months later I finally said F it and gave in and told her we can move once again and start over in the new city. I gave up everything I loved and our home that we both loved. We had so much room there and a fenced yard for our son. We moved five months ago and just wound up working for her for simplicity's sake since we were having such a hard time finding a good reliable daycare. There were days where we just worked opposite shifts just to make it work. I felt less of a man and fell into a deep depression, became cold and distant to her and eventually we only had sex once a few weeks. I stopped taking the time to look her into the eyes, hugging her, kissing her, touching her. We became almost like roommates with a kid. We never talked about it though. She ignored me too, but I know she could see the sadness in my eyes. But she just seemed so happy with what she was doing and I couldn't just walk away from that or tell her we needed to go somewhere else. Our apartment was very small, like tiny. We had nowhere to go. We had nowhere to enjoy each other's company like we used to. Nowhere for our son just to play and run and laugh. So cramped. I should have done something. Gone to a counselor. Tried to find a job I loved. But I just rotted there. Drowning myself in the bottle. Every day. I did all the housework. The laundry. Dishes. Meals. And taking care of our son. I was a drone just grinding through the days. She said she felt dead inside when she told me. My D-Day. She felt nothing and just had to go and feel again, feel anything. I died a little inside that day. I completely shut her out and walked away. I took me a couple of days to wake up, but I fought for her. Offered forgiveness, offered to try to find religion with her as I'm an atheist and she's a Lutheran. Told her I'd do anything to keep her in my life. To get help for my drinking as I should have years ago. I just wish she would have been given me an ultimatum before having an affair. She's already walked away though. My heart and soul are so broke right now and I'm having a hard time holding it together and I just want to drink so effing bad but I can't. I have to do this for my son. I've got a job, a place to live and I got my son. I told her I could forgive her, we could rebuild our lives together. I could give up the bottle, focus on us. I've made so many mistakes, I gave her the same ultimatum, 
She should have given me a month ago, two days ago, and she chose him. I've been asleep for so long and I woke up this week. It's been, it's been very bad. I can't stop throwing up. I've been having random panic attacks and breakdowns. I was thinking about editing all of the screenshots, removing names and places and just sharing them with you all. In those messages, I tried to win her back. She even had the gall to post on Facebook that she was in a relationship after I changed his mind to separate it. I'm over here reaching out to her and trying so hard, and she's already moved on. It's like she's not the same person anymore. I sent her my closing statement from our relationship today. Going forward, we'll only talk about money and our son until the divorce. He's going to continue to pay on the bankruptcy and assist me financially as if we default on that or restructure it would make life hard for, for all of us, including our son. I'm going to share my closing statement now. Me. One more thing. I'm sorry I fell into such a dark place once we moved to such and such. I just wasn't happy there. I was severely depressed. I didn't focus on your needs, physical or emotional. I became even more consumed in the bottle than I ever have. I hid those feelings from you because I wanted to give you the world. I gave up the happiness of having a real home and a real job and such and such. I did that for you. I should have gone to counseling. We both should have, especially after your sister's passing. I wasn't there for you through that. I lost my passion to truly live and live through you. I cannot change the things I've done or the choices I've made, but I'm truly happy you found a spark of joy in your life and that will keep me going along with the joy I find through being with our son every day. I've even already considered attempting to find another woman to love, but I can't do that. It won't be love. It will be empty. It won't help anything, and it's wrong, and it's not fair to our son. I've hung all of our pictures here to remind me of the love we had when we truly loved each other, and I'll keep moving forward to make sure our son is loved, happy and healthy. I'm going to find a counselor soon and just talk to someone. Her. We both lost a lot of who we were when we moved to such and such city. We became shells of ourselves and we let it take over everything. I'm sorry too that I didn't focus on your needs, your feelings, and your happiness. We both were living under a shadow and it ruined us. I really hope you do go and find someone to talk to and I hope you really do stay away from, from alcohol. Our son is everything. I miss him so much. You have no idea. I'm so glad that he has you. I know he's in the best hands possible. Me. But I also want you to never forget there is no justifying the choices you made either. And you can hate me for what, for that and that's okay too. I want you to always remember that you gave up on us and our son. Yes, yes you did. We did make a vow and you broke that vow. I'm dropping it now. Have a good life. Wow, let me give my thoughts. There, you're, you're absolutely correct. You guys said vows to each other in front of family, friends, you know, in the church probably, or maybe it wasn't the church, but you guys said vows to each other, you know, promised each other what you're going to do through thick and thin, for better or worse. Things got tough. You felt like you were, you had to make a tough decision. And um, you did it. You moved when you didn't want to move. And you did it for her. You know, you did it for her. And look how she repays you. Things get tough for her. She leaves. Not only you, but her son. And if she, let's say, you admit that you were bad with alcohol. She says, she, she knows that you were bad with alcohol. She leaves your son with you like she ran to this other guy and that's all she cared about talk about being selfish that's a selfish woman here disgusting man let's check out these comments i'm curious about these comments someone said there is too much to tell you in one post there is too much for you to absorb in one day just know this, the hurt and pain will end and subside. 
I promise. Though it won't make sense or seem possible right now, I promise it will. Take 50% of her responsibility for the breakdown of the marriage. But her having an affair, that is 100% her responsibility. I get that she wasn't happy and she has a right to leave, but she should have left before eating. And let's see. What mother can give up their child? Terrible, terrible person. And here he is. That's what astounds me the most. She tells me she thinks she's a terrible mother, and quite frankly, she is. She always put half effort into it. That's another factor of why I got so cold to her. She just didn't give a crap. Not following his schedule of meal times or nap times. Wow, she didn't even want... She acts like she didn't even want her family anymore. She was just done. Guys, he has an update. Let's check out this update. All right, guys, so we got another update here. Reddit Surviving Infidelity. I wanted to share with you all again. A lot has happened since my last post. Well, it's been five months since everything happened, and I can finally say I'm back to my old self. My drinking at this point is almost non-existent. Nice. I landed a job as an IT technician back in January and worked Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Perfect for daycare while being a full-time dad. So happy to finally leave my retail career behind. I did lose it for a while there in December, having my whole world turned upside down. The anxiety and constant feeling of dread. I drowned myself in liquor. I almost stopped eating entirely. Lost 40 pounds, sleeping only for a few hours a day. I'm 5'11 and I and was 180 and dipped all the way down to 140. Currently at 155, eating normally again. I really hit the fan about a month ago. My wife and the AP broke up and got back together numerous times through the months, but last month I got a random phone call from the AP. As he found my number in her phone, he was going on about how she was lying to him about still talking to me. Obviously, we still talk. We have a child together. He called me to tell me that he was done with her and that she's pregnant. He was asking me if it was mine. I was taken back by that. It's not. She finally tried to reconcile with me. I turned her away. For the first time in years, I feel like I can breathe. Make my own decisions. It was my wake-up call to finally get the ball rolling and hire a lawyer. They got back together a few days after that, too. The whole situation is just obscene to me. He's only reached out to see our son twice in this entire time frame, so I shouldn't have any issues getting primary custody. Finally filing for divorce this week. I just wanted to say it does get better. I was blind to just how manipulative and controlling she was. And now that I've been on my own for five months, nothing but good things have come my way. I do still get lonely sometimes, but my son keeps my mind off of things and certainly keeps me busy. It's just a good feeling knowing I don't need her. I don't think I ever did in the first place. I became codependent to a toxic person. The best thing I ever did was finally let her go. Nice. Let's check out the next update. Hey, right, update. It's been a while. Just checking back in. It's almost hard to believe how much time has passed. In three months, it will have been a year since I walked out that door. Life certainly does go on. Don't give up no matter how low you get. Pick yourself up and get it together. Let time heal your wounds. Not many bad days anymore, though I still relive some of the trauma in my dreams. Wake up to wipe a few tears and go back to sleep. I do try my best to not think about it or let it get to me, like I used to. Still not completely divorced yet. My lawyer is still finalizing the parenting plan. We both took the parenting class. Judge granted me custody during the action. I doubt getting primary custody will be any sort of an issue at this point. She pays me child support, and I pay her my contribution to our Chapter 13. As bi-weekly weekend visitation, even now after all this time, it still shakes me a bit to see her with him. They're always together during the exchange, seven months pregnant with his kid. 
looking that tool in the eyes. Do it because I have to. I certainly don't owe her anything, but I owe it to our son to keep my cool and stay collected. As much as I resent her and her choices, he does deserve to see his mother. I just repeat to myself in my mind that she is not the woman I fell in love with. I have a contractual obligation to allow to see my child. The new job keeps getting better. I've gotten two raises and pretty hefty bonus. When I got stuck out at a power district to do tech support, maintenance and network administration, eight to five Monday through Friday still, been doing it since March, no complaints whatsoever. I'd also like to note that I had taken a step back and realized I had no stress in life anymore, like whatsoever. I can breathe now. I managed to quit smoking over a month ago, just cold turkey. Not looking back, realized I didn't need it anymore. I still enjoy a glass of whiskey at the end of the day. I refuse to let my vices own me anymore. I tried to date, had a few flings at this point. With as of yet though, it's almost a chore sometimes meeting and talking to new people. Not to sound too off-putting, but everyone that I've met has just been so needy. I just don't enjoy being glued to my phone anymore. No matter how bad your heart aches or how bad you want the other person back in your life, take a step back and remember what they did to you. Remember who you are and who you were before you met them. Well, like I said, I just wanted to check in. I'll probably make another post of after the divorce is final and let you all know if anything dumb happens. Right now, my life is just on a cruise control and I'm doing very well. To everyone that reads this, that's going through what I did, it does get better with time. Don't chase the solution in the moment. You'll regret it later. Take this time to allow yourself to become a better person. Also, forgive my crappy grammar. Wow, and guys, he has another update. All right, another update. Guys, believe it or not, I think this is him writing this all out is very therapeutic for him. It's so great to have spaces like this, man. It really is. Reddit surviving infidelity. Just feeling kind of down lately. Need support. Well, a few weeks ago, she had the kid, had to drive a couple of hours to the hospital she was at to sign paperwork stating that I am not the father. Oh, because you guys are still married. I haven't really been feeling right since. She's been on maternity leave and, and was asking to have our son stay with her for a week. I allowed it. This is the first time I've been away from my child for more than a couple of days. I feel completely out of sync with my routine. Then my dad texted me this morning and said that she must be going for Mother of the Year award with how many photos she's posting. I know it's just her form of self-validation. Being the perfect mother, I don't think it should bother me, but like heck, it does. I almost feel disgusted with myself that it does, though. I am unsure if I'm in some sort of regression. I just feel so down today. I want to crawl into a hole. Just have to get the DNA test done to show the court that it's not my kid, and it'll be over. My lawyer is collaborating with her to get it scheduled. It's almost been a year, 20 days until my one year anniversary of D-Day. It's getting to the point where I won't, keep I won't keep replaying it all in my head at night, staring at the ceiling. I don't know, I'm doing good, but I just feel numb. I feel, I feel I could ramble about it more. I just wanted to talk about it. Thank you all. All right, Reddit surviving infidelity. Time for another update. Three hours ago, let's see. Well, guys, it finally happened. She was assaulted by him and he was arrested. Wow. She tried calling me multiple times and I just ignored the calls. Told her to either text me or email me. I have the police report in front of me he was arrested last week for strangulation terroristic threats domestic assault third degree and negligent child abuse 
to clarify this is pertaining to what he did to her. He was apparently assaulting her while she was holding their three month old. This is karma at its finest. It makes me recall when I previously stated that I doubt his tolerance for her BS would be anywhere near as high as mine. My boy was not with her when this happened. I gave all of this information to my lawyer and I will see what he comes up with. Also got my DNA swab finally, sent off yesterday. Almost time to put this all behind me. Things are still going great for me and the boy. Got him enrolled in preschool to start in the fall. Still doing system network administration at the power district. And I just got my own place for just me and my boy. Life's on easy mode. We've been working hard locking down potty training. And the little guy is really getting it. Still haven't met anyone worth investing my time in. More or less just putting that on the back burner for now. I have no desire to be with anyone and am joint and I am enjoying my nice, quiet, easy life. I'm almost divorced. Nowhere to go but up. Nice, nice. And you shouldn't be looking for a relationship. You know, your son's in preschool. You know, you're trying to divorce your wife, and she's coming to you talking about, oh, he hit me, you got police files, you're trying to get a divorce, you ain't got time to get in a, get in a relationship. Your most important focus should be on your child and bettering yourself, sir. For real, bettering yourself and, and, and making sure your child is good. Oh, man, I wish you nothing but the best. And I'm looking forward to more updates on this. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Catch you guys at the next one.